But we're strong in the Lord and the power of his might. And he gives us all power. There's no shortage. Amen? Amen. There's no shortage, right? So there is absolutely no shortage. There's no shortage at all. God continues to flow in us. Let me tell you, every time that we gather, every time there's a corporate anointing, there's a corporate anointing that falls upon us afresh. And there's so many times, how many we get healed, delivered, set free. God just pours out his anointing. And we walk in a greater portion, right? Amen. We're victors in him. So for those... You know, I think most of you came to the conference on Friday night, the Fired Up Conference. But it was incredible. Wow. Thank you, Lord. Like, we are not, we're, we're still, we're just, we're just rolling in everything that God did at that night. It was incredible. For us, it was a three-day conference. We had Thursday, Friday, Saturday, right? For many of us, it was a three-day. It was a three-day encounter with Jesus. And let me tell you, did we ever get filled up? Did we ever get filled up? Yes. And so, and we give him all the glory and the honor. Now, yes, God worked incredible, beautiful miracles. We saw healings and deliverances. We saw salvations. Everything that we prayed for, God was faithful to literally give us. Like everything we prayed for. Everything. Every seat filled, all tickets sold. Like everything we prayed for, God made. He, he literally answered every prayer. Every single prayer. Because he's a God that answers prayer, right? He's a God that says, when you ask, I open up those doors. Ask, seek, and knock. Are you going to ask? Are you going to seek? And are you going to knock? When you ask, when you seek, and when you knock, the door is opened unto you, right, woman of God? And the door is being opened unto us. And the door has been opened unto us. And so we have to stand strong knowing this word that in Ephesians 6.10 it says, I am strong. I am strong. I am strong. In the Lord. In the power of his might. It's not your might. It is his might. Ephesians 6 10. It is not your might. And just like, yeah, and just like in, in, in Zechariah 4 6, you know, it's not by might, it's not by power, but it is by my Holy Spirit that we do what we do. We are literally called to walk by the power of the Holy Spirit, and we know that the mountains must become leveled up. Right? Amen? Right, amen? It's like Zerubbabel, like every mountain is going down. We literally speak to every mountain and say it comes down in Jesus' name. So typically what happens after a, a, an incredible conference like that, you know, is, is that sometimes people have the tendency, you'll be tired. You, we know there's a lot of effort and work that went into that. And, um, and so fatigue or just little things that may come up. But the enemy sets people up. The enemy sets people. If you think no, then you don't understand spiritual warfare. Okay? The enemy sets people up to try to bring in that offense or that picking up this or that, right? Picking up an offense or, or, or just getting annoyed or misunderstandings. That's always a big one. Misunderstandings. Oh, well, they said this. Or how come they didn't say this, right? Or how come they didn't do that, right? That kind of thing. They're all lying spirits. But we don't pick up any of those. But instead, we stomp on on them, right? We decree that we're stomping on them. Let me tell you, we have not, that's why we sang this today, we haven't come this far and we haven't gone this deep. In other words, there's a spiritual maturity that you all have now. So the things that used to get you years prior, right, after a big event like that, don't get you anymore. That doesn't mean that they're not there. That doesn't mean they don't try. They just don't get to have that same entry like they used to. Because you've, re you've literally grown. Like, there's a spiritual maturity. And so we are strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And we are not about ready to let the enemy take one single thing. There was a glory outpouring, church. There was a literal outpouring of God's glory. Uh, right? And here's the thing. It happens here every single time we meet. This is a glory outpouring. When the Lord gave me that title for this year's conference, that theme for this year's conference. It's because what we experience here uh, every time weekly, we come gather twice a week. This is something that needs to be experienced for all. Like we literally just took, you know, uh, what happens here and we just duplicated it. We just said, well, Lord, we're going to be who we are. We're going to be who you've called us to be. Yeah. You've anointed us. You've, you've filled us, right? You've empowered us. And we gather at the house of glory to do this all the time. But now we're going to gather somewhere else with uh, more people there. And we're just going to do the very same thing. It's what has been poured out here is now being poured out 
to so many people. When you have been under that type of an anointing, you do not go back to the same old, same old. Like you're changed forever. And I have heard that phrase from so many different people that I have been forever changed. Why? Was it anything different than what we experience here? No, it actually wasn't, other than there was a longer time frame, right? But there was nothing different that we did there that we don't do here on a regular basis. But I'm telling you, the intensity, the hunger, every single person in that room came hungry, came with an expectation. And when there's hunger, I always tell you this, when there's hunger, you literally are pulling on the, you're literally pulling, you know, on the, on the, on the coat strings of, of the Lord. Like you're literally inviting the presence of God even more so. There were hungry people there. They experienced what we have the pleasure, the honor, and it is an honor. It is a privilege to experience this. So never let it go, grow old. Never take it for granted. Amen? So, so, yes, it is. We are strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, and that is in Ephesians uh, 6 and 10. So I'm going to read some of this to you here right now from the word of God. Finally, my brethren, be strong, which means to be consistently strengthened. Consistently strengthened. No one has the corner market on arrival. Hey, I've arrived. Need no help. And, uh, God, you know, no. We need to be consistently in his presence. And he says, finally, now be strong. In the Lord. Be consistently strengthened. We do this by consistently being in the word of power. The word of power. Amen? Amen. Which is the ability of God. So be strong in the Lord and in his power. Be strong in the Lord and in his power. This is the power of his might. So the power of his strength. Okay, so he's giving us a command right here. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. And isn't that awesome? Because we just received this upgrade, and I saw this in the spirit. Now, you might say, well, sure, you saw it. You were planning on saying that scripture. Actually, I was not planning on saying that scripture. The only scripture that I was going to say was Ephesians 6 and 10, right? But that I just went on to verse 11. It happens to be the very next scripture. But I'm telling you right now, God, he sets things up for us. He sets things up for us. And in the spirit, when I saw the armor being placed in upgrade, that is, the increase being placed upon us, and I knew that God was pleased with what has happened here as at this body, this body of, of people. Amen? Which means all of you. Somebody say amen. Yeah. Glory to God. Because you've been raised up. You've been raised for such a time as this. This is in, this is in Esther 4.14. So you've been raised up for such a time as this. And I decree over you from this day forward, you're not taking on yesterday's uh, baggage. You're not going to take on yesterday's uh, junk. You're not going to take on old mindsets from the past because God has freed you up and he's literally saying, for such a time as this, I've called you. For such a, a time as this, I've raised you up. For such a time as this, I have literally called you to speak, to be an end time harvester. You are literally going to have eyes to see that which needs to be done and then you're also equipped to do it. You don't just have eyes to see and ears to hear. You're not just going to, you're going to pray because the prayer is the vehicle of anything to change anything. You got to pray. It's the vehicle, right? But you're going to actually go forth and do it. God says, I'm going to cause you to literally walk up to the tree. You're going to see it's ripe. You're just going to pick the fruit. You're going to pick the fruit. And the fruit is ready. The harvest is ready. The harvest is ready. And for some of you, the harvest is right in your own home, or homes, right? The harvest, is, for some of you, literally right in your own homes. And, and you're going to just go up and you're going to pick that fruit. For some of you, you say, well, you know what? That harvest isn't quite ready, but there are other areas of harvest. Well, let me tell you, you keep watering that other seed. You keep being faithful for that other seed because there's going to come a day where that seed is also ready. That seed is also ready to be harvested. But as you do unto someone else, God will make sure that which is needed within your house, your family will also be done. We're strong in the Lord and the power of his might. See, I'm strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. My strength is not my own. Your strength is not your own. Your strength is not in the matter of, are you rested enough? You know, your strength is not in, in your own ability to perform. Your strength is in him. Are you surrendered enough? It's not, are you ready? It's, are you surrendered enough? Your strength comes from your surrender. Your strength comes from your consistency in him. Your strength comes from your eyes being focused upon him, never shifting. You're not going to shift like a shifting shadow. Amen? Yes, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. 
Glory to God. Thank you, Father. Let's go to Hebrews and uh, chapter 12. Thank you, Father. We love your word. Yes, God. And we give you all the praise and all the glory. So in Hebrews and in chapter 12, it says, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily besets us. We're laying it aside. We're stomping on it. We're destroying it. We're not laying it aside so we can pick it back up another day. When it says to lay aside, it means lay it aside, turn your, way, turn your eyes from it, and walk away from it. That's the intention, okay? So lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares, right, that so easily besets us. And run. Run. Run with patience. Run. Run the race, but run. Run the race that has been set before you. There is a race. Runners don't always want to run. There comes a point in time where runners get tired and they want to stop running. You can't afford to stop your spiritual race. No one can. We can't afford stopping in our race. Well, how do we stop? When we just let the circumstances overtake us. How do we stop? When we allow someone's stupidity, better phrased as immaturity, right? Get in our spirit, man, and cause us to talk different, think different, act different, or even just be silent, right? We're going to run this race. We're going to run this race. Get over it right now. Just realize not everyone's going to like you. Not everyone's going to accept you. Not everyone's going to understand you. Not everyone's going to be for you. It doesn't really matter because you're going to keep your eyes on Jesus and you know that he is for you. And if God be for you, who can be against you? And you have to have more faith in who Christ is in you, the hope of glory, than anything that's outside the realm of God's spirit. Because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world, right? And so unless you've trained your spirit man to be literally be quickened. Now, I just preached a, word, a message the other day, a couple of times ago, about quickening the dead, right? And so, and, and for some, literally dead, they need to be quickened. But you may not be dead, but you might be kind of asleep. It's the same thing, church. You need to make sure you're quickened. Make sure you come alive. You need to make sure that you really go, you realize, you know what? Let that word come flowing out of me, that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. That word's going to come flowing out of me because I'm not going to take the bait and we're going to go forward. And the one thing is, is that when there is already something in motion, right, it's just easy to, for it to keep on going and to pick up speed. Unless something comes against it to literally stop it. But that means it was allowed. Is somebody following what I'm saying? Okay, when there's something that's in motion and it starts to pick up speed, it is up to you to see ahead and say, oh, I see that roadblock. Oh, I see that barrier. Out of my way, devil, because this, I'm not stopping. This vessel's not stopping. This vessel's not going to take the bait. This vessel's not going to end up in a catastrophe. This vessel's not going to end up just in chaos. When God sets you ablaze for more, God set us ablaze for more. And he said that we are strong in him. We're not weak. If we stay in him. So we will strip the devil of access, every access, every point of access. We will strip him of any point of access every day of our lives by walking in holiness and by walking in purity. Those are the two keys that he always tries to come against and put that doubt in your mind. He wants to stop you from walking in holiness and purity but say it's not going to happen. Because we have gone too far. We know. We know the power of God. So I'm going to walk in holiness, and I'm going to walk in purity. I'm going to walk in love. I'm going to walk in love. I'm not going to let people's things, people's just, you know, immaturity to, to, uh, to get my, my mind, my heart, my focus. Because you're called. You have been called with a purpose. And it's far greater than any of you know today. I believe, even as I had that vision for you, Pastor Jennifer, those gifts that God had given, right? Beautiful, beautiful boxes wrapped beautifully. And you went leaping with joy to start opening them up like childlike faith. Well, I believe that there are increases for every single person. I believe that God is not a puny God. I believe that his, his you know, Ephesians 3.20, that, that's, I love, I always love that scripture, right? He, he wants to give you greater, more than you can hope, more than you can dream or even imagine. 
course. I've, I've looked at that in the Amplified so many, so many times. I mean, it is just so powerful. But God wants to give you much more than you currently have today. That's the kind of God that we serve, you guys. This is the kind of God that we serve. And he says, listen, I've put my kingdom in you. He's put his kingdom in us. The kingdom of God is near you. It's within you. The kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God is here. The kingdom of God is also coming. So the kingdom of God is within you. But he has put his kingdom within you, which means he's put his spirit within you. And he says, I've called you to be strong in me so that you literally release that which I've called you to release because you're not going backwards. Woo. Father, we thank you. And no weapon formed against us is going to prosper. And this should be a scripture that comes out of your mouth every single day if need be. Isaiah 54, 17. But no weapon, I don't care how big it is. I don't care how strong it looks. I don't care how horrible it looks. It's not going to prosper. Someone that I dearly love received, literally received a death sentence this week. And it didn't look good at all. It looked pretty bad. But you know what? This is why it's important that you have people of faith around you. It matters who's in your life. It matters. I think we all know that. Doctors spoke a literal, a, a death sentence. And then they said, and with this death sentence, there's no help. It's gone too far. You're too old. And so, therefore, the only hope is hospice. That's what they said. And then I got the phone call, Right? And I, I stopped the person in the middle of what they were saying. And I said, no, absolutely not. We decree life right now. And we cancel this death sentence. And we curse the curse. She will not die. She will live. And we continued. And we continued day after day, day after day, day after day. So that was, that was last week. And that's been going on for the next few days. Well, you know what? I just received a text right before service. I literally received a text before service that the story is completely different now. That's what's coming out of their mouths are completely different. Now, instead of, sorry, we can't help you, you know, you might as well start making preparations. Now it's like, hey, we're going to go ahead and help you. We're going to start today. We're going to start today. Before they said there's no help for you. No, actually, we are going to help, and it's going to start today. Yes and amen. You better believe it. It's going to start today, and it's going to continue until God says enough because we shall live. We need to know how long your assignment is, and we're not going to be cut short. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. When, when there's a weapon that's formed against you, whether it be sickness, whether it be something else, when it's a weapon that's formed against you, you need to know that it's a weapon, and you need to rise up and say no weapon formed against me is going to prosper. And make sure you have Holy Ghost, faith-filled people in your lives uh, that are going to partner with you by the word and not by the circumstances. Because you know what? It's just this quick. It's just like this quick for things to shift. It's literally. It's are you going to stand in faith or are you going to stand in fear? Are you going to listen to the word that's been spoken? In other words, the word that was spoken from the enemy? Or are you going to listen to the word of God that's already spoke? He's already spoke, right? And so we're gonna, we have to make sure that we stand strong on this, you guys. And we don't stop. Devil's tact, his tactics, he's crafty, he's subtle. We know that. So we don't stop. We have to keep on keeping on, and we will do that. We're not ignorant of the, of the enemy's devices, right? So you've been chosen. Say, I've been chosen by God. And, and I'm not ordinary. I'm extraordinary because God's spirit is within me. You're not ordinary. You're extraordinary because of God's spirit within you. He caused the water to turn to wine, and he's caused you to literally walk extraordinary for him. Amen? With unlimited purpose. You have unlimited purpose. Now, now, now turn to uh, 1 Peter. Thank you, Father. Turn to, turn to 1 Peter and in chapter 2. Thank you, Father. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. This is who he calls us to be. And it says here in verse 9, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Who is to do the proclaiming? We are to do the proclaiming. That you may proclaim. Are you reading it with me? That you may proclaim the praises of him. That you may proclaim his praises. That you may proclaim that your mouth will be open. 
opened up uh, that you are chosen by God and you know that. So you're going to show the goodness of God to everyone that is around you. You're going to show it by a changed life. You're going to show it by a decreed word. You're going to show it by a mindset that will not budge. If it's not in the word, we're not going to hear it. You're going to show it because you are chosen. You're chosen to honor him. You're chosen. Say it with me. I'm chosen to honor him. I'm chosen to walk uprightly. I'm chosen. I'm literally chosen by the hand of God. Listen, if you were chosen by me or by somebody else, that'd be great. But you were chosen by God, you guys. You were chosen by the creator. Do you understand what that means? And he says, not only were you chosen, but you were chosen to proclaim God's goodness. You were chosen to be a mouthpiece for the Lord. You were chosen literally to be an ambassador for Christ. You were chosen to stand in the face of darkness you were chosen to stand in the face of opposition and say no you don't devil because I've got the word of the Lord I've got the word from headquarters you are defeated and you will not go forth you will not have your way how many warriors do I have in this house so so we understand that it is by the words of our mouths that we proclaim things and things shift and change just as it is with the world, the words of their mouths. But that's why we have to make sure our hearing is sharp, keen, strong, even in the spirit. While I was at the, I went to go make a visit and I was in the hospital room when the, when the uh, doctor or nurse came in. He was a nurse. And he was doing his job just doing his job, reading all the vital signs. That's what they're supposed to do, right? But out of his mouth, what was coming out was curse words because as he was calling it out, the other nurse had to write it all down. And I'm standing there right at the bedside, and I'm hearing words like, she's confused. She's, she's low on this. She, you know, she just curse words. And I was appalled. I couldn't believe it. And, and I, I said, out loud, not, I didn't say it under my breath or anything, because I was standing right by her head, right by her, in her face. And I said, and I was stroking her hair, and I said, nope, nope, you have the mind of Christ. You are called for a purpose. You were going to live. I mean, I started just praying. I started praying, and I said, I speak life, life, life. As they're calling out their little, their instructions, whatever you call that, they were the vital signs, right? And he was writing. I just continued, the one nurse, the head nurse, right? He's doing it on the computer, and he's calling out. He, he kind of goes like this. <laughs> With this confused look on his face. You're kind of like, just bewildered, like, what? You know? And I didn't care. I didn't care at all. Yeah. Because you know what? That vessel, the woman of God, is hearing what that nurse is trying to decree upon her, and it is not of God. Yeah. And so you have to have people or be one yourself. Let's be those people. Let's be those people ourselves that don't back down just because someone says something that is, is it like a death sentence or, 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 you know, there's just all kinds of assignments that come against you. Let's be that person that will bring life to someone else. And we're called to do that. We are all called to do that. And I love this because that's what it says, that you may proclaim. You. You're chosen for a reason. Your chosen generation, a, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. He's already called you out of darkness. Now you're going to see those that still have darkness around them, whether it be because they're walking in it or whether it be because the devil found a way to try to put it on them. Either way, we're tearing down those walls right now. We're sending forth into that situation a holy ambush. And we decree right now that every minion, every demon spirit is going down. It will not stay. It will not have its way in the name of Jesus. God has strengthened you for his power and his might. Friday night, so many captives were set free, even to the point to where apparently there were two hotel workers that received the Lord. Two people that, from there were hotel workers, that is, that received the Lord. And then, of course, we know a lot of rededications and, and, and a lot of healings and deliverance, right, that happened and took place. That's of what we know of. But there's more, always more. 
and we'll, and some will know now and some will know when we, you know, one day when we go to heaven. And, and God will see to it. He, he will see to it that, that you do, you'll know what you, what you need to know, right? Father, everything we do, let it be from a heart of purity. Let it be from a heart of complete sold out abandonment unto you, Father. Wow, you know, lives were being given over to Jesus. Wow, we had a part in that. All of you had a part of that. We had a part. Of, yes, we had a part in that. Is that good? Yes, because there was a day that you were in bondage too. There was a day that we were all in darkness, but not anymore. Not anymore. And we give him all the praise. We give him all the glory. Because he's worth it all. So worthy. He's so worthy. Wow. Wow. Thank you, Lord. So with Christ, we're going to scale every wall. We're going to tear down every troop. We're going to advance the kingdom of God through our lives. Remember, you were called, you're chosen to proclaim. You're called to proclaim. Not somebody else. Don't wait for somebody else to do what you're called to do. You're going to proclaim the truth. You're going to proclaim the gospel. You're going to proclaim the mysteries of Christ. You're going to do it. Say, I'm going to do it. I'm proclaiming. Yes, you're going to proclaim the mysteries of Christ. You're going to proclaim the truth of his goodness, his love and kindness, his mercies that are new every morning, every, every single day, every single day. Thank you, Father. Psalm 97.5 says, the mountains melt like wax in the presence of the Lord. Mountains are melting like wax. Okay, if you go looking in the natural, you will see that mountains don't melt like wax. They just don't do it. A mountain doesn't melt like wax. But when the word of the Lord says something, and we have ears to hear the truth of it, then we get to receive it when we hear. You have to hear. How does your faith grow? But by hearing the word of God. So what the Bible says in Psalm, in Psalm 97, 5, that the mountains melt like wax in the presence of the Lord in your life. Then therefore, there must be a spiritual significance to this scripture that we can grab hold of. The mountains, re which represent every obstacle, literally represent the, the will of the devil, and you know he has one, right? The mountain, which represents the opposition that comes against you, the opposition so that just when you were growing strong in the Lord, there's something that happened that wiped you out. And then here we go again, right? When you get to that same old place, something happened and wiped you out. That's not going to be your story anymore. No, not anymore. Because like I said, this, this, this faith, the momentum that we have in him is going to keep on, keep on. It's going to roll and roll and roll. But the mountains melt like wax in the presence of the Lord. So in other words, every spiritual hijacking spirit that tries to come against you in the Lord is melting like wax. Literally melting like wax. So in the spirit realm... You have to know what is not of God and stand up to that mountain, so to speak, and literally decree, you melt like wax in the presence of the Lord. It is in the presence of the Lord. So why, why does the devil try so hard to stop the presence of the Lord from manifesting in the way it does every single time in this place? Because he knows that God's presence equals his loss. Yes. 